So, we are continuing with our lesson, our overview of reality. This, we call this uh, series of lessons um, Overview. Until now, we've talked about the upper worlds and how they emanated from the thought of creation to do good to his creations. Here in the drawing, I drew it in advance. Normally, I, I make the drawing as I explain, but it was impossible to, uh, to do all that. Um, during the lesson, so I did it in advance. <coughs> Here, schematically, we have some combination of uh, both worlds, uh, the spiritual and the corporal. What we learned in previous lessons in this general overview is how, from the thought of creation, a situation was made where Malchut, the foundation of the future creature in the world Ein Sof, that received all the light, felt shame, made the Tzimtzum, the restriction on itself, and decided to reach equivalence of form with the giver, with the emanator. And that is actually how the emanator arranged it. The, um, arrangement of powers to make the creature think that. And Malchut, which operates toward it, is still, well, still doesn't feel itself as the operator. We're still talking about the substance of creation, substance of creation being the will to receive, which reacts this way to the uh, influence on it from above from the pleasure, the, the pleasure and the giver of the pleasure. So in Malchut and Sof, in this uh, Malchut of the infinite, appear the Rashimot, the reminiscences. And according to these Rashimot, it can operate and begins to operate with the Masach, with the screen on its will to receive, makes its Simtsum and begins to build Assist the first system of relationship after the symptom of reception in order to bestow, and thus the five parts of fame of Alam, the world of Adam Kadmon, um, come up, come out. There's no creature here, it's just nature. The substance, which is able to receive, reacts in this manner to the two forces that operate on it the pleasure and the giver of the pleasure. Once it reacts, to these two forces and deduces all the Lashimot from himself. Then fr from the five Lashimot, Dalet Dalet, uh, Dalet Gimel, four by three, uh, three by two, two by uh, one, and one by zero, five pots of fame of Adam Kadmon come up, come out. And that's the filling of the upper nine, in fact. The upper nine are the Bechinot, the discernments, prior to Malchut. They only become Sfirot once you begin to receive in order to bestow. So here they are impressed with how Malchut uh, is similar or dissimilar to them. So on the one hand, there's the first symptom that operates on them. On the other hand, there's the intention to bestow. So they restricted themselves and then decided to operate with the Masach in the way that the world of Adam Kadmon has five overall forms of reception, with lights of Naran Chai, Nefesh Ruach, Neshama Chai Echida. In that, the Rishimot from Ein Sof complete their realization and it is no longer possible to receive in order to bestow and we are left with a part called Malchut itself from Tabal to Siyun 
in that part it is impossible to receive in order to bestow. There is no strength in the creature to do any act of bestowal. There is only the tzimtzum here. The tzimtzum uh, is there according to the will of the creature, of course, who does not want to come to a disparity of form from the Creator. So that's the tzimtzum, and the creature as yet cannot express any act, cannot manifest any act of its own. So we learned that in order to help the creature somehow advance in its um, bestowal upon the Creator, in its um, resemblance, to, um, similarity to the Creator. So it's not the light that, uh, as, as it filled the, the Kli in the world and so often gave it the sensation of the emanator and correct it this way. The Kli in actions in order to bestow that were afterwards manifested, executed in the world Adam Kadmon. But here, Bina from the Potsofim of Adam Kadmon comes down to the Sium of Galgalta, from Tabu to Sium to Galgalta. Uh, Sof of Golgotha, so it comes down to this Malchut and gives this Malchut a sensation of Bina. From Tabul to the Palsa expands pure Bina, here there is still strength to uh, bestow in order to bestow, but from Palsa to Siyum, here the new Tzimtzum operates, the second Tzimtzum, because here Malchut and Bina begin to influence on one another and restrict one another. Malchut is unable to receive anything from Bina here. Anything it receives will be in order to bestow and that's why Malchut restricts Bina, creates the Palsa and says up to the Palsa uh, the powers of Bina dominate me when Bina and Malchut uh, join. Here it is possible for Gdusha, for sanctity to expand and this why that's why this place is called the world Atsilut. And from Pasa to Siyum no light can expand, only it's called light of Tolada, some tiny luminescence. Uh, because here I I cannot receive any light in order to bestow. So only a small part of Malchut is then uh, fulfilled from Tabul to Pasa, and it's also not actual fulfillment because here Bina controls, it's bestowing in order to bestow, it's not the nature of Malchut. And therefore, here too there is still no Tikkun correction. So in order to bring the creature, this part from Tabul to Siyum to Tikkun to correction in the world of Nikodim, there was a breaking of the vessels, meaning Malchut and Bina joined together in an act called the breaking of the Masachim, the screens, the borders, and then Bina and Malchut mixed together, the attributes of Bina and Malchut, but on the level of in order to receive, which is a level where they can be in order to uh, together. Malchut can't be in order to bestow, Malchut can't rise to the level of Bina and mix with it in its power or in its act. The mixture can only be if you break the borders between them. It's a very serious act because then Malchut and Bina fall to a state where they are completely opposite from the Creator, but there's no other choice because uh, otherwise Malchut would not be able to reach Tikkun correction. If we look at the act itself, it's a very serious, grave, terrible act. There's nothing worse than that. Uh, actually, you might say, if that's the case, that the first symptom is also uh, as an act, a very uh, serious act. Any act of uh, departure from the Creator is uh, an unnatural act act and is considered um, serious in spirituality. Anyhow, Malchut connects with Bina in the breaking of the vessels and the breaking of the Masachim. 
the strains, and we learn about it from the words of Kabbalists, that now uh, the worlds of Abiya come up from the uh, remains of the broken vessels, from desires that do not have a masach screen. Uh, now, through the tikkun, the correction of the, of the kelim, the worlds are being created. First, the world of Tzilut was created from kelim that were easy to correct. Galgalta and Andi did not actually break themselves, but because they were joined with the kelim of Achap in the world of Nikodim, and then kelim that were made as new from the joining of Gugal Tanayim and Achab, and from them the three worlds, Breit and Asiya, were made, meaning the world of Tzilut, which is Gugal Tanayim, imprinted its form in Ozen Chotempe, and then the worlds of Breit and Asiya came out. We learned that these worlds are, uh, they stand up to Chazed Yitzirah, and below Chazed Yitzirah, we are left with a, uh, a place for the kelim that cannot be corrected, but are only restricted and refrained from using. It is impossible to use them. These are called kelim de klipa, or klipot, shells, or the shell section, madar klipot. It's from chaze de etzira to siyum. These kelim will be only corrected from above, through a special act from above. If the creature expresses its desire to be corrected in everything else that it can perform, then it will also kind of compel the upper force, the emanator, to correct the kelim that the creature himself uh, itself cannot cor correct because they belong to the nature of the creature, to its stony heart. So once the five worlds Adam Kadmon and Abiyah um, come out. Now there is a concealment on the Creator, on the Emanator, on the Upper Light, past all these worlds. Meaning now, according to the five degrees of Aviyut, coarseness in the creature, in Mahud and Sof, we have five degrees of concealment. Adam Kadmon, Asilud, Bled, Asiyah, where after these five concealments, Neither light of Ein Sof nor the giver, the emanator, are felt by the future creature that is about that should be made. Now, why is that so good? It's good because the future creature has to be a creature, meaning stand on its own. Be independent, have its own self vis a vis the Creator. It must have free choice, the sensation of freedom, lack of pressure from any direction. It has to stand on its own and decide freely what it prefers, which attributes, which states, and which goals. And this form can only be if the Creator is concealed as being the giver, and also the pleasure is hidden from the will to enjoy. As we remember, when Malchut Den Sof began her actions, she started them from Bhinab Bet in the Talad Bhinab Dorisha, the fourth phase of the direct light, when uh, the Bhina Bet uh, felt the giver, the giver, the giver of the pleasure and the pleasure itself, so two attributes. So here too we have to come to a concealment where we don't feel the pleasure or the giver of the pleasure. Now if we jump forward, uh, then we have two kinds of concealment, double concealment and single, single concealment. In the single concealment, we correct the lack of the sensation of the host, or oh, that's a double concealment. In the single concealment, we correct the sensation of the lack of pleasure. In that, we come to correction. 
to the correction where even though we don't feel the host or the pleasure we make the right decisions freely but that happens from below upward when we start rising in our tikkunim, in our corrections, at the end of time. Here, in the meantime, we are in a state where we have five worlds, and now the creature has to be made, which will be called Adam. Adam, because this part of Malchut Densov has to be similar to the Creator and thus um, realize the purpose of creation, which is to do good to his creations. Or if the creature comes to be like the Creator, it comes to the best possible state, or the only good state that exists in reality. As Malchut of the world of Silut, um, begets the world's Bria so Malchut of the world uh, uh, begets the Patsuf Adam Arishon by taking the Malchut from the middle point in Ensof and connecting it with well actually the Siyum of the Gdusha which is at Chazir de Yitzhak. In this combination uh, a combination of the corrected upper nine toward Malchut and Malchut, which is taken from Ensof. With that combination, the Patsuf of Adam Arishon was made. The special thing about it is that its Malchut belongs to the very primordial, uh, primordial uh, um, matter that the Creator created which operates behind the concealment of all five worlds and can then manifest itself with respect to these concealment. Yes, what it prefers, to be in concealment and like the Creator or to want the pleasures regardless of how it is, how much it is connected to the Creator. So past the concealment, past the worlds where both the, the host and the pleasure from the host are hidden the Malchut, the first matter that the Creator created, the natural desire, the true desire, should now evolve in order to uh, decide for itself. Because this matter is still not connected to the Kedusha, to sanctity, to the Upper Nine, to acts of bestowal, to knowledge about the appearance of the Creator in the Upper Nine, it stands seemingly down at the bottom of Patsuf Adam Arishon, or actually from his Chazé down, and is still not connected to all the attributes of bestowal and the thoughts of bestowal, and hence does not understand them. It's a very similar situation to the state of the world Nikodim prior to the breaking. So here too we have the same necessary act of breaking this Patsuf in order to mix the attributes of bestowal, the upper nine, with its Malchut, which is obtained through a special act called misleading Adam Arishon on the eve of Shabbat, when Adam Arishon rises with all the worlds through a special act from above, where Upper light comes from above and raises the worlds together with uh, with Adam in them to a level where he almost uh, enters Kedusha above the Parsa, but still some of his Kareem are below the Parsa, he can't see it, can't notice it, and uses them in order to bestow, but that was his original intention. But because of that, he breaks, although he had the right intention. The Kelim did not have a Masach to receive in order to bestow, so he breaks, and his parts fall to the world's Bia, which descend to their place, to the situation that they're drawn uh, here. And then Adam Arishon with all. He, uh, the parts of his body, the entire Pratsuf of Adam Arishon is called Neshama, soul or creature, 
נברא, בשדרית, אדם הראשון, קריצ'ר, נברא או נשמה, סול, ג'נרל סול, קולקטיב סול. This פרצוף is called נשמה, because uh, the highest level of correction it can reach before מתיקון is, is נשמה. And the degree of חיה נחידה can join the degree of נשמה only uh, to a very small uh, amount. So אדם הראשון broke, parts of him fell to the world's ביאה, And also, vis a vis this uh, holy abia that were built, the impure abia is now erected. Actually, the difference between these worlds is that the, um, the wants of the shortcomings of Adam Arishon after the breaking are all. Well, they manifest or they appear in the impure Abiyya. So what uh, we see is that Klipot, the shells, are a necessary thing. It is through them that the shortcoming and the wants in the Neshama appear through them. They appear through the Klipot in the Neshama and then One understands what desires, what the shimot, reminiscences, one must correct in order to move on to the next phase in his ladder, ladder of, of corrections. So the fact that Abiyya de Tuma, the worlds, were made here as assistance to the broken vessels and then the broken vessels between the pure and impure abia uh, disclose the difference between the positive and negative forces bestowal and reception and as they're in them it gives them a sensation and ability to choose and distinguish Uh, discern their own nature. Actually, the worlds are the projection of the attributes of the broken vessels on the upper light. These worlds do not exist in some spiritual realm outside of a person. They are a part of the structure of our structure. Without Adam, without us, um, there, is no, there are no worlds or a place for the worlds. It's all about us and how we perceive reality. But by breaking Adam Arishon, meaning the spiritual Kli, when it is now a broken part, 600,000 parts, because he was broken through the light that comes from the Rosh of Arichanpin, that which is the number 10,000 Arichanpin. Adam Arishon is Vak, uh, six, last six Firot. So when it reaches Gal, uh, six times uh, 10 Firot times 10,000, Again, the six vak times ten sefirot in each times ten thousand. That's the power of the light that it breaks. That gives us the number of the broken par parts, six hundred thousand parts. We can also write six hundred thousand souls, broken souls. Now that state that the souls are in, in the spiritual world between the impure Abiyya and the pure Abiyya, that's not enough yet to, to determine uh, one's free choice and actually become a creature, because a creature is one who is not only opposite from the Creator in attributes, but one who doesn't feel the, the, the presence of the Creator. 
and who doesn't feel any pressure from the upper one, from the giver, from uh, that, that he created me and that there's a goal here and a purpose, some commitment uh, of the creature toward the creator, etc. So we have to bring the creature to a much greater concealment than the kelim are in, even after the breaking of the kelim. So the breaking of the vessels has to come to, to bring the creature to a state where it um, reaches its primordial substance and starts from there, meaning after there's a breaking, there's a mixture between Dina and Malchut that is acquired here, is Bina and Malchut, that are together. This mixture, each and every element of the uh, connecting of Bina and Malchut must now come to a state where it seemingly begins the way from scratch, from existence from, abs from absence. But in this existence out of absence in the creature, when it comes from the absence and the will to receive, even there there is already a spark of being. So in that state, so that state is called our Lamaze, this world. It begins in the same way as there is evolution in spirituality as we had with the world to receive that was not connected to Bina that did not understand that there is an attribute outside of, of, of me and there is an emanator who and who operates yes, it, it didn't happen in, in the world it happened in Adam Rishon and Evanim it happened only in the form of Nefesh de Nefesh because he received all the attributes and the forces, the powers from above without a prior need for it so there's no sensation of the actual reality so here we run for the first time into well the beginning of the creature who within contains the part of the emanator within within it. And that's where our universe begins. Now I drew like an arrow here that comes and builds the matter in our universe as if it comes directly from spirituality. The truth is that there is no connection between spirituality and what we call corporeality. There is no con direct connection, but there is a um, replica or a projection the same matter from the breaking of Adam now begins to be scrutinized, sorted through the light that operates on it. In other words, the Shemot, from the breaking of Adam Rishon, come to such a complete shattering that they remain raw uh, when Bina and Malchut uh, um, join together in all sorts of um, in all their possibilities to to to, um, to join Dalet, Gimel, Bet, Aleph, Shorish, Bina and Malchut and all kinds of interminglings um, any any possible way of, of, of connecting. So as scientists uh, pretty much tell us, for the time being, we'll accept their um, uh, uh, presumption um, as correct from about 15 billion years ago if we take time as something that exists toward us, with respect to us, because there's no other way for us to, to express the order of actions in our world except through 
times. Afterwards, we'll talk about the perception of reality, the concept of time, why we can't talk about ourselves any other way, but only um, when we use the concept of time. So about 15 billion years ago, matter began to be made. Now this matter of this world, the corporal, the physical, is still a will to receive, or a desire to enjoy, but it's got sparks of Bina, of the desire of the Creator within. That's why this matter evolves. Uh, 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 it's alive. It absorbs and there's not a single particle in it that does not contain two contradicting forces. The rejecting and repelling force, absorption and ejection, uh, pressure and uh, from the outside inwardly and from the inside outwardly. So this balance in every particle of matter and every possibility there is um, exists uh, this this way, from the tiniest particle to the uh, greatest conglomerate of parts. Not only in the steel, even the steel is not steel, it's also alive within, it's got its own laws and operates and it, 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 it works. Uh, the reason it's considered still or inanimate is because the will to receive and it does not accumulate, is not made, it doesn't change, is not being made. Afterwards, about uh, three or four uh, billion years ago, uh, three or four billion years ago, uh, the, our solar system and planet Earth were made and as Bala Sulam writes, uh, for uh, several dozens of millions of years, uh, the earth was cooling and heating and cooling and heating until uh, the heat uh, became intrinsic and remained inside and a hard crust was made. And about 300 million years ago, uh, life on earth began first, the flora and then the animate level and as we see according to the um, surfacing of the Rashimot, any Rashimot that appears as cause and consequence one after the other, they beget or they, they um, come to a form of life more complex uh, cr creatures are made until about 150 million years ago uh, creatures were made that live according to our regularity so to speak and about about five million years ago uh, the time of, Lashim, of the Lashimot uh, came to a uh, creature called man. Although biologically this man is like we are, it still didn't develop internally and it still took millions of years to develop internally until about 40,000 years ago it came to a certain man who was living with his clan or family who began to believe in forces, natural forces, meaning he began to feel that he doesn't know everything, but suddenly he began to feel that he was pretty 
uh, um, alone in his work, left, abandoned in his work, in, in his world, sorry, that there are forces that he doesn't understand, that there are incidents, that incidents accumulate, um, that uh, a sensation was made in him of something that exists outside of him, that controls him, dominates him in a way that he cannot know and understand. Um, that created the beginning of the ancient uh, belief systems. And that began, that started the ancient civilization um, of people who lived in clans. And that was until about until uh, about the time of Adam Arishon, Adam. Now, Adam was a real person who evolved out of the previous, his own previous forms, to a level that he was the first to attain godliness. Meaning, he was the first to have, unlike those he was living with, he, he was the first in whom the Rashimot of Bina erupted, uh, compared to Malchut. So, he realized that there was an upper force. Of course, this attainment, although it was an attainment, it was nevertheless very lucid, very pure, fine, because his kelim were still very, very pure. The Rashimot, as we know, evolved from light to um, coarser and coarser, from finer to coarser. So, uh, as tradition has it, he even expressed his uh, knowledge, his discoveries, in a book called Raziel Malach, the Angel Raziel. From him we get the um, Hebrew letters and uh, the writing in general. It comes to us from Adam Rishon, from Adam, and after Adam there began an evolution where from his time onward as a result of him um, or after his soul, new souls came, emerged in people, meaning discernments in people who could attain spirituality, you know, so Adam Arishon taught him. So the 20 generations between him and Abraham were generations of Kabbalists already who were at this or that level of degree of connection with the upper force, meaning the Shimot began to be scrutinized in them in accordance with or in connection with the thought of creation attained by uh, a man. Uh, finally Abraham came who uh, discovered the thought of creation of Shemot in a very substantial manner. Why? Because he established the method of disclosure, discovery and, and correction, and that's why it's called Abraham, the Avaam, the father of the future nation, who would be entirely the, like the parts of the soul of Adam Rishon. So he gave us Sefer Yitzira, the book of creation. Humanity did advance in the meantime, along with the uh, progress of Kabbalists, and the will to receive had to go through its four levels of review, and come to a state where in Prinat Daled, the last degree of review, there is a breakout of the, of the will to receive in its uh, tiniest um, desires, 
on the lowest desires, meanest desires, and they too should join the correction and the desire for similarity with the Creator. So we have to look at this evolution among those who attain the Creator and are thus and thus correct their souls from Adam Rishon onward. Those are called Israel because they want Yeshar Kel straight to uh, the Creator. And there's a general evolution too. And what is that? It's uh, besides Israel. Israel. It, it's those souls, those, well, say, people who as yet do not feel an urge because of the uh, manifestation of their Rishimot to know the Creator and uh, come near Him. So there are those in whom the Rishimot uh, erupt, so to speak, in their Prinabet, in Bina. Those Rishimot compel the person to start looking for uh, a fulfillment to this need that has risen, and that person becomes a Kabbalist. And there are Rishimot where Bina is suppressed by Malachut uh, because of the joining of Bina and Malchut after the breaking. Everyone has both Bina and Malchut, both kinds, but of course. It depends which operates more in a person and accordingly one operates. So we have to see uh, to what extent the ego evolves, the will to receive evolves, in Kabbalists and in humanity in general. Kabbalists kind of ride over uh, humanity, they advance over the in, um, increasing and inflaming ego over time. So we learned in Adam Rishon, if prior to Adam Rishon and Abraham there was a time of, we said that it was a time when man began to think about nature, about forces, natural forces that he doesn't know, and People already believed in things, they had beliefs. So from Adam to Abraham, the polytheism began. Abraham's father, Terach, was an idol worker. He uh, was a worshipper of natural forces. He gave them all kinds of shapes and forms. He attached to them all kinds of uh, seemingly dominations. Uh, he was known as, a, as an idol worker. And Abraham from that came to realize that there is only one up, upper force which is good and that there is no evil here. That's a very important rudiment. Until today, there are the same beliefs exist in everyone, in every person, and in humanity in general, where we think that there are several forces in the world, bad force, good force, and that people are, can be in, in either one. People are looking for fortune, that, there's, that they want to escape evil eye, and they don't understand that it all comes from one force, and this one force is uh, will operate on us in this manner in order to bring us to the good. And the division, this good division, is only divided within us into good or bad, depending on our level of understanding and correction or corruption. So Abraham was the first to discover that everything comes from one source that there are no uh, I don't know, thousand uh, forces or systems, good or bad, um, as we later on see in ancient Greece. And what they thought about uh, the forms of gods, how they were getting married and fighting, and, and, and meaning they, they projected their own uh, form, their own 
perception on the upper forces. These primitive forms exist to this very day, of course. But Abraham, with his revelation of godliness, he was the first to discover it in this deterministic, correct, and systematic way. He also discovered how this upper force operates on us and how we can connect to it. And he thus passed on his method of correction, of discovery, and the disclosure of reality, the perception of reality. Uh, to, he gave it on to his sons and to his disciples. And from him began a different time in humanity. Actually, from Abraham on, uh, began the time of slavery. The will to receive the ego in humanity began to be, uh, to grow. It grew to a level where people wanted now to dominate others. They felt it's worthwhile for them. They began to feel an urge for it in their egos. And although Abraham and his disciples develops in monotheism, meaning that there's only one force that operates and they want to equalize in form and it's only good and the evil comes only because uh, we stand vis-a-vis -vis it and that's why we think that it is bad because of our ego, it stands opposite it. So, vis-a-vis uh, -vis that perception, vis-a-vis -vis that monotheistic uh, perception, the, the polytheistic uh, perception evolved, uh, where even where all the nations, including the more progressed ones, including Rome and Greece, etc., up until about until uh, the 5th century um, AC, um, everyone still bowed before um, natural forces and they thought that this is what was operating on them. And from Abraham on, we know that uh, the majority of humanity with the part of Mahut that uh, suppresses Bina in it and a small part of humanity uh, exists where Bina overcomes Malchut. These are the, called the descendants of Abraham and they have to go through uh, quicker phases in their development because Bina itself speeds up this uh, development, meaning the will to receive has to manifest in them more quickly, so they enter an exile in Egypt, where by doing this both physically and spiritually, they uh, go through the sensation of an, uh, inner and, and physical enslavement, where they reach the understanding that they have to exit Egypt, meaning, well, in corporeality we know what enslavement means, but in spirituality, uh, yes, we said that there are two sides, uh, sanctity and klipa, so that method that they received from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the middle line system, the method of advancing in Dvikut, in adhesion with the upper force. So, vis-a-vis -vis that, the world of Klipot began to manifest. For people who were already in spiritual consciousness, we're talking about the 70 people who came down to Egypt. So they began to feel uh, forces opposite holiness. So between these two systems of impurity, which are generally called Pharaoh, 
vis-à-vis um, -vis the forces of Kedusha, of the Creator, so they felt that they were in between them, meaning uh, people started scrutinizing over the will to receive, started scrutinizing the connection between Bina and Machut. What could they do with Machut if it was constantly growing and that they had to go above it and correct it? That's the whole thing about the um, ensla enslavement, that they felt that they constantly had to restrict Machut so as to remain as the people of Israel among the Egyptians. Until they finally came to a situation where they could no longer be dominated by Mahut this manner, in this way, it could no longer be restricted, uh, or they would come to a state of death, and the state of the uh, ten plagues came, where people had to um, um, dominate Bina over Malchut, um, and as we know in the story about the Exodus, um, about how they uh, fled from uh, Egypt. In this manner, one fl flees from Malchut. He knows that he can't work with Bin and Malchut together. He has to get some help from the upper force in order to uh, uh, restrict Malchut and join Bina. And this escape is called the exit from uh, Egypt, the, the miracle of the exit from Egypt. This is how they come to the uh, recep reception of the Torah, it's about the 13th um, century um, BC. And then they receive um, the system. The will to receive that grew in Egypt. For them, the system of Abraham is not enough. They have to receive another system, the um, desire of, of man and one's natural recognition of godliness according to the Rishimot is not enough. Now they have to uh, perform certain mental interior actions toward others in avut, in mutual guarantee toward others, and in bonding with others. He has to create such conditions to the additional of you so that the upper light will influence it in the me in the form of light that reforms, and this is called Torah, and that brings one to correct his soul so that he can acquire a masach over the increasing of youth and the intention to bestow. And that's the method called Torah. And with this method they advanced, the children of Israel, meaning those who have acquired the method of Abraham, and after the addition of the desire in them, that they received in the enslavement from Egypt. I mean, we have to understand that they were that at the same time the will to receive evolved in, in people and the Bina part in them. And this whole time is called the time of uh, um, enslavement in Egypt. At the same time, humanity evolved and reached a situation where the will to receive the part of Malchut compared to Bina was constantly growing, and still the parts of Bina were unfelt as being inside this Kli of Malchut uh, to, in the nations of the world. So there's Israel, where the part of Bina appears over Malchut, and then one awakens to Magdatikun, and then there are the nations of the world where there's still no um, appearance of Bina, but Malchut dominates in its evolution over, um, over man. So the children of Israel who have received uh, who had received this uh, system can now build 
the Beit HaMikdash, the Temple House, and reach Mochin de Neshama, the highest lights, and so they live accordingly, and are therefore living in the land of Israel. Now, what is the land of Israel? Uh, we've said that the world of Adam Kadmon is similar to the world of Tzilut and Bria and Tzilasiya, where all the spiritual worlds are in fact an expansion of uh, sorry, the physical worlds, the physical land are an expansion of the physical force and uh, the spiritual force within matter. Uh, the difference between the worlds is only the substance but not the form. The form in all of them, the spiritual worlds, is bestowal. So in this world, although this matter, the, the matter in this world is egoistic and uh, 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 still vegetative, animate and speaking for matters here, there is only the force of attraction in them, uh, drawing in, in, in the still or in the animate or in the vegetative or in the speaking here. Um, in the uh, conceptual, even in the spiritual, it's all drawn. So it's a different substance, but the form of it is, is the same. So just like the spiritual worlds are similar, and in that they are similar, uh, similarly, seemingly parallel, so the last world, Asiya, imprints itself in this world too. It's not that there is a connection between the worlds, but the same form projects to this world. So to the extent that our world advances in the development, in the uh, elicitation, in, in the manifestation of its substance, uh, the form which is more and more similar to the upper world appears. Um, it, it, its projection appears. So in this world too we have a division just like in the world's Abiyya, where the part of Atzilut in it still hasn't been realized in this world, but the parts that are of, 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 of Bina in it, in projection to our world and its connection to Malchut, uh, renders in our world, creates in our world places that are seemingly holier. There's no sanctity in them. The sanctity is brought by man by being in sanctity in his own soul. But the relationship between these places is seemingly uh, like the re relationship between the Kedusha and the Klippa and the spiritual worlds. So if the worlds Bia are divided in such a way where in the world Bia there is the Temple House, uh, Mount Moriah, Jerusalem, Israel, uh, I wrote it down here, uh, the land of Israel, in Chazed Bina, and then the lower half of Bina is, uh, is Jordan, Tanhi in the world, Buya, and then Malchut de Buya is Syria, and below, well, up to Chazed Yitzhah, that's Bavel, Babylon. So up to Chazed Yitzhah, they are still, these are zones, or correspondingly in the spiritual worlds in Bia, there's still the influence of luminescence, of Kedusha, sanctity, from Asilut. Whereas um, the parts below Chazed Yitzhah, they already belong to the se shell section, Madol Klipot, and we call it overseas, so to speak, abroad. Uh, they are farther um, outside of the land. So uh, it is expressed uh, in us by the conquests of uh, King David, who conquered everything that belongs to the world itself, because until then, is a domination of Malchut Atzilut, and he corresponds to Malchut Atzilut, King David.
And then, according to the revelation of Rashimot inside them, the people of Israel come to a state that they cannot build the temple, meaning to come to the corporal land of Israel, according to their spiritual state. When they are in a spiritual state, so they reach the corporal land of Israel and build a temple house, which is already the manifestation of Mochin de Chaya in their, in their soul. In this world, it is called the first temple. So they are in that state, in the highest spiritual state ever that appeared from above downward. We still have to understand that what appears from Adam Rishon through Abraham and through all his descendants and disciples, that's still uh, appearance from above downward. It's not exactly... Uh, um, it doesn't exactly match what happened in spirituality because we said that in corporeality there has to be the same process as in spirituality but that uh, process still hasn't been hasn't materialized we are still advancing as we come as the world has come down from above downward from Zach to Afen, from pure to coarse. So the water receive is still growing. It's growing in the nations of the world, in the children of Israel. And then the children of Israel begin to descend from this higher level, from the first uh, temple, and they come to a state where they split up into two parts, uh, Judea and Israel, Yehuda and Israel. And then they come to a situation about 550 BC where the ten tribes move from the land of Israel and disappear. They vanish. The connection of the parts of Bina with the parts of Malchut begins. The connection between Israel and the nations of the world. So they, these ten tribes disappear. They should only manifest at the end of the generations. And this period in the nations of the world corresponds to the prosperity of the polytheism and the beginning of the Eastern teachings, Eastern religions, uh, Confucianism and Buddhism and all those from uh, the whole area of the Indochina uh, subcontinent. Lao Tse, there are many uh, philosophers and uh, uh, founders of the Eastern religions. They at that time began to uh, began their teachings they started disclosing their discoveries, so to speak, to the Eastern peoples, and then these religions and beliefs were made, formed. At that time, in the peoples that are, that are closer to Israel, philosophy began. The prophets that were engaged in the wisdom of Kabbalah had um, they were connected to the Greek, to the neighbors, so to speak. And so some leakage of, of uh, material or perception of reality that the people of Israel had uh, broke through to the nations of the world. And because on the one hand they heard about the knowledge, but on the other hand they still didn't have the actual recognition of the spiritual world because the Shemot from Bina still didn't manifest in them. So they copied, so to speak, the knowledge about spirituality, but they copied it to the corporal matter, and that created the corruption called philosophy. So this evolution finally came to a state of the state of the ruin of the first temple, where the division continued in the people, not only in the split between uh, the ten tribes and the two tribes, and the, the uh, disappearance of the ten tribes, but there was a, 
um, there were disputes within the remaining part um, between the Stokim and, uh, and, and, and how they asked um, uh, the, the exile in Babylon for 70 years they came back from there it was an exile for the purpose of quick redemption because they had to the exile in Babylon is kind of a purification like in the breaking of the two parts of him in the world Nikodim. so the they returned and started building the second temple which was built actually by the son of uh, Queen Esther in Hashverosh. So in this exile uh, they repaired the Kelim and obtained Mohin Deneshama to build the second temple and when the corruptions started there in the second temple they caused uh, the appearance of the Romans and the, the, the rise of the Romans, the Roman Empire it says that if one falls the other rises is Kedusha and Klippa, Sanctity and, and Klippa in history we can see how when Israel fall from their Kedusha, from the Tikkun in them there is immediately prosperity in the nations of the world, but not the better ones in the nations of the world, but the worst among them. So in that, they uh, strengthened the Roman government until it came to Israel, and the children of Israel once more descended to such a level that they could no longer belong uh, to the land of Israel, or even to Jerusalem and to the temple. Uh, in, spirit, in spirituality and hence in corporeality too so the Romans came here and in the year 70 AD they ruined the temple the physical uh, temple of course the inner temple was broken in the hearts of Israel before that as Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Akiva taught love thy friend as thyself and he thought he could this way correct the wrong that was appearing in the souls of his of Israel and he couldn't do it so the people was exiled and as a result it was exiled in corporeality too and so at the end of this time we uh, received the book of Zohar where it is written that at the end of the, that time it will appear at the end of the exile so now after this whole time we have received the book of Zohar as a result of the fall of the children of Israel from, from spirituality completely uh, which didn't have something didn't happen from the time of Adam Rishon. In, in, with Adam Rishon it began to manifest. Now the children of Israel, those souls that were at a spiritual level, they lost it and they broke the spiritual um, awareness. So these sparks of dusha that entered. Malchut through the breaking caused the making of the religions from the right side it is Islam from the left side it is Christianity and the people of Israel fell from its natural religion which is the wisdom of Kabbalah to its exterior religion which is what we know of today is Judaism with all its traditions in this world which are nothing more than a replica of spirituality so the exile continued because this left Klippa Christianity conquered Rome and through Rome it expanded to the rest of the world um, Byzantium, uh, Rome, 
So there was a, a process, a real complex process, started here. This is not the time to, to go over it. It's a whole process. That is, fundamentally, the um, manifestation of the relationship between Bina and Malchut and the souls. And the more Israel are among the nations, and the more they have to mix with and mingle with them, uh, because it had to mingle with them, it was now exiled, and now it has to live among all nations in, in corporeality, in, in, in the physical world, because these parts have to afterwards rise to spirituality. And so we have to understand that Christianity and Islam are um, previous, so to speak, forms, just like Judaism during the exile is also the previous form of manifestation of um, religion. They all precede the appearance of the true religion, which is, as Barasalam calls it, the religion of bestowal, as Barasalam calls it in his article, The Solution. So this exile continues uh, through um, afterwards the uh, people of Israel goes through Spain, Germany, in Europe, in the Arab countries, in, uh, Muslim countries, and uh, at the time of the Middle Ages the will to receive increases. There is a time when the future of humanity uh, ripened. They think that the Middle Ages is a time when nothing happened. It's actually the opposite. It's a time when the f uh, rudiments for the uh, making of the Renaissance and the capitalism and the Industrial Revolution, um, all the elements that are basics of it, the fundamentals for that were made then. The time of the Enlightenment, uh, Mendelssohn and all those in the 17th uh, century. So on top of this history, we should also see the um, primary um, uh, development is the time of uh, slavery and the time of the Middle Ages and the time of the capitalism. Um, in religions that were established as a result of the exile of Israel and the fall of Israel from spirituality to corporeality, the Islam and the Christianity, we have to consider them progress compared to the previous states, because if the previous state was polytheism, where there were many forces and many gods and all kinds of beliefs, here you might say it is a belief in one force, although in Christianity it's not exactly that, but we'll discuss it and see why it comes in all kinds of um, in this kind of transition. So humanity advances through times of fanaticism in the, in the Middle Ages, when it's still unaware, it begins to connect to the upper force but doesn't understand how. So in the end, it comes to the growth of the ego, which brings on the time of the Renaissance when culture uh, begins to prosper, and man becomes the dominating. The ego grows, and if in the state prior to Adam Rishon, or during the time of Adam Rishon, people's ego were virtually non-existent. They were like animals. They lived in caves. In nature, they didn't see a difference between themselves and nature. The will to receive the ego was still small. Afterwards, from Adam onward, when the big cities were made, 
Mesopotamia, the, the whole culture there. Then people started um, identifying themselves with their city, with their clan. Uh, they started feeling themselves in their environment, the ego grew. And then came the time of belief in the upper force. So accordingly people thought I am the powerful one, I am the unique one in nature. The growing ego makes one understand that about God and about himself. So the ego that grew afterwards grew to a level where about uh, from about the time of enlightenment in the 17th century. Why did the time of enlightenment come? Because the ego grew so much to, to a level where it's not the upper force that's the most important thing, but I am the most important thing. So here began a revolution within mankind. The atheism began where people started, stopped connecting to the upper force uh, and they said, I am the center, at the center of reality. And then began the industrial revolution and people began to feel that they have to conquer nature and conquer the environment. So again, the Industrial Revolution uh, supported it because the stronger man is, the stronger his ego, and so we see that it, in the end humanity broke from the desire for money and honor to knowledge. They regarded, humanity regards itself above nature, above reality, the time of anthropocentric uh, era began where man is the center of reality. Besides thinking about that of himself, people stop believing rumors, so to speak, uh, non-substantiated facts. They rather place their own research, own experiments and experience of nature and of human society uh, as facts instead of beliefs. And thus we've come to the last phase in the evolution of humanity where the people of Israel, their assimilation and descent reached a final state uh, throughout history, it didn't happen uh, until uh, um, it never happened before that the people of Israel left the Torah completely, even the traditions. When Malchut grows over Bina in them, in the broken souls of Israel, then uh, the souls begin to to manifest the corruption in them. And here came to a state, just like always in the greatest corruption, greatest darkness, now begins to manifest a state that is worthy of redemption. So in corp reality there is the return to the land of Israel as Bala Salam writes, there is the giving from above of the land of Israel. As there was the giving of the Torah on Mount Sinai. And now we have to receive the land of Israel, receive the Torah, and realize the tikkun, the correction, uh, and the method of correction too appeared through Rajbi, Ali, Bala Sulam, up to our days. And now is the time when humanity sees that it's reached a level in its evolution that it's asking questions that do not belong to this world, 
where although there is abundance uh, in humanity and it can have a great life on earth, people do not ask about this life. They ask about something that is above it, meaning why am I empty, why am I feeling bad? People seemingly have things that people never had. Most of the people. They have food, they have homes, they have work, they have families, no one is killing them and humiliating them day in and day out, and they are displeased with this life. They're asking, what is the meaning of my life? Why am I existing? Because now they're not asking about physical pleasures or money or honor or knowledge or anything in this world. And, uh, and, 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 and fulfillment, they're not asking for fulfillments, fulfillments from these things. They want fulfillment from something that is unknown, that is above it. They're not asking about this life, about why am I living here, but they're asking what about me besides this life? That's how the question is, that's what the question really is. But people are still unaware of it. They don't understand it yet. So now begins a time when they have to get an answer, and that answer can only come by the appearance of the additional reality where we exist outside of our five senses from a dimension that we perceive with different tools. Right now these tools are um, concealed within us, hidden, we have to discover them, we have to correct them, and in them we will discover the higher reality where we exist. We actually exist there too now. Uh, but our corrupted kilim uh, suppress the sensation of the upper reality, and if we correct those kilim, we will feel how we live in both forms of reality at once, so that the flow of life will be felt as eternal, whole, and when we correct our kalim, um, we have to come to the correction of our mingling among nations, where first Israel repents through the light that reforms, which is something that only the wisdom of Kabbalah can bring, as the Book of Zohar writes, that it can only appear at the end of the generations. So when the people of Israel begin to correct themselves, as Baal Sulaim writes at the end of the introduction to the book of Zohar, it then begins to be a, a light to the nations, to bring it to the nations, the correction, and then all of us as one become a kli for the inspiration of the light of divinity, the creator, that tikkun goes uh, through two concealments corresponding to these two shatterings, these two concealments. One concealment is on the giver, the other is on the spiritual pleasures. So one goes through these two concealments in his study of Kabbalah and the evil in the dissemination of Kabbalah they cross the machsom, the barrier which is the siyum, the end of Kedusha, and they move on to spiritual worlds and conquers them through his tikkun, first in the wooden punishment, in attaining uh, the reality of the Creator as, as a wooden punishment, and then as eternal love, and from the world of Asilut rises to himself to the inner corruption, where the entire soul of Adam Rishon that was created and received an additional of yud until um, man can come to a state where it is completely similar to the Creator in its giving. With the Tachton, which is Zon, Zon symbolizes the Tachton, the lower one, um, absorbs its avyut in Zad Dibina, and then the force of Guna, on top of its entire avyut. 
It's what we learn in the world of Tikkun, where Zohan Pindatzilut has a small nukva, Achel, and the big nukva, uh, Leah. Leah is actually a Chab Deima. So, a person comes to a desire which is a Chab Deima, the desire of the Creator to benefit him. So, he acquires that desire and, acquire and relates to the Creator in this way, and ultimately comes to a situation where he resembles himself, reaches the level of the, the true level of man, where he resembles himself completely to the, to the Creator. Because he went through this entire path himself, he also acquires the understanding of the thought of creation to delight his creatures in a degree and situation that he was in prior to his birth, when he was incorporated in the thought itself, which is actually, he is actually a result of, so he rises up to the level of being exactly like the Creator. That completes this purpose, this process, reaches the end of its correction, after that, Kabbalists tell us, um, as we complete the 6,000 years of this, of this world, and then the world of Tzilut corresponding to Shabbat, and then there, is a, there are a sense in the 8th, 9th, and 10th millennia, which are Gagalta Absag, and then we reach the world in Sof, and after that, Kabbalists say that there are further ascents in reality, but we have no knowledge of it, not even in words from them, because they say that it cannot be expressed in words. And still, in our Rishimot, all those states, although they were not rooted, we come from a lower root than that. But after our Tikkun, which is about to happen, we will, of course, be awarded higher and higher degrees. That's basically the summation that I felt I needed to make at the end of these lessons of the general overview of the wisdom of Kabbalah. Of course, we should add articles about, about the essence of the wisdom of Kabbalah, its connection to science, to religions, to, uh, to, to man, uh, this was special about the correction that is before us. There are other topics that are like um, components of this picture that we drew. This is basically everything that I wanted to say today.